devil with the three golden hairs. There was once a poor woman who bore a son, and the baby had a call on his head. That's a sign of good luck. And when the village fortune teller heard about it, she prophesied that when he was 14 years old, the boy would marry the king's daughter. A few days later, the king himself came to the village. He was traveling incognito, so no one recognized him. And when he asked what had been happening, was there any news? What were people talking about in the village and so on? They told him that a child had been born with a call. Apparently, they said, that meant he was going to be lucky and marry the king's daughter when he was 14. Now, the king was a wicked man, and this prophecy didn't please him at all. He went to the parents and said, My friends, you've got a lucky boy there, and I'm a rich man. Here's the first sign of his luck. Entrust your child to me, and I'll take good care of him. First, they refused. But when the stranger offered them a good deal of gold, they saw the merit of his proposition and said, Well, he's a lucky child after all, and things are bound to turn out all right for him. So... In the end, they agreed and gave him the child. The king put the baby in a box and rode away till he came to a deep river. He threw the box in the water and thought, that's a good day's work done. I've saved my daughter from an unwelcome suitor. Then he rode off home. If he'd stayed to watch, he'd have seen that the box didn't sink as he'd hoped, but floated like a little boat. Not a drop of water got inside. It floated down the river to within two miles of the capital city to a spot where there happened to be a mill, and there it got caught in the weir. The miller's apprentice was fishing there at the time, and he pulled it out with a boat hook, thinking he'd found a great treasure. When he opened the box, though, he was astonished to find a little baby, fresh and rosy cheeked. Having no use for a baby himself, he took it to the miller and his wife. They were delighted with this little child because they had no children of their own. God must have given him to us, they said. So they took him in and looked after him. They brought the luck child up well and taught him to mind his manners and always be good and honest. Time went by and some years later, the king himself happened to be caught in a thunderstorm when he was out hunting and he sought shelter in that same mill. He asked the miller and his wife if the fine young man he saw was their son. No, they said, he's a foundling. Fourteen years ago, he floated to the weir in a box and our apprentice fished him out. The king realized that the boy was none other than the luck child that he himself had thrown into the water. And he said, my good people, would you let that young fellow take a letter to the queen? I'll pay him two gold pieces. The couple agreed and told the boy to get ready. Meanwhile, the king took some paper and wrote to the queen. As soon as the boy who bears this letter arrives, he must be put to death and buried. 
This must be done before I come home. The boy took the letter and set off. But he soon got lost, and by evening he was wandering in a great forest. In the gathering darkness, he saw a single glowing light between the trees. It was the only light to be seen, so he made for it, and before long, he found himself outside a little cottage. Inside, there was an old woman dozing in front of the fire. She started when she saw him and said, Where have you sprung from? Where are you going? I've come from the mill, he said, and I'm taking a letter to the queen. And I got lost in the forest. And now, I'd like to spend the night here, please. Oh, you poor young man, said the old woman. You've wandered into a robber's hideout. They're out at the moment doing a job, but when they come back, they'll kill you, sure as eggs. Let them come, said the luck chap. I'm not afraid of robbers, but I've got to lie down and sleep because I'm worn out. And he lay down on the bench and fell asleep at once. Soon afterwards, the robbers came in and asked angrily, Who's this lying here? He's just an innocent boy, said the old woman. He got lost in the woods and I let him lie down because he was so tired. He's carrying a letter to the queen. Is he? said the robber chief. Let's have a look at it. They took the letter from his pocket and opened it. And carefully spelled out what it said. The boy should be killed as soon as he delivered the letter? Oh, that's not right, said the chief. That's a dirty trick. Even the robbers, hard-hearted as they were, were moved to pity. The chief took another piece of paper and wrote a new letter, saying that the boy should be married to the king's daughter as soon as he arrived. They let him stay asleep on the bench till the morning, and when he woke up, they gave him the letter and showed him the way to the palace. And when he arrived there, I gave the letter to the queen. Sure enough, she ordered a magnificent wedding, and the boy was married to the princess. Because he was good looking and kindly, polite to everyone, she was happy enough about it. Eventually, the king came back and discovered that the village prophecy had held true. And despite everything, the boy was married to his daughter. How can this have happened? He said to the queen. Didn't you get my letter? I said nothing about marriage. The queen showed him the letter. The king read it saw what had happened. He sent for the boy and said, What do you mean by this? I didn't give you this letter. I gave you quite a different one. What's your explanation? Eh? Hey? I'm afraid I can't explain it, the boy replied. I spent the night in the forest and someone must have changed it when I was asleep. Well, you needn't think you're going to get away with it snarled the king. Whoever marries my daughter will have to travel all the way to hell and bring back the three golden hairs from the head of the devil. Oh. I can do that, said the boy. I'll bring back the golden hairs for you. I'm not afraid of the devil. That... He made his farewell and set off. The first place he came to was a big city with a porter at the gate. What's your trade and what do you know? I know everything, said the boy. And what I don't know, I can find out. Well, you can do us a favour then. There's a fountain in the market square that used to gush with wine. 
And now it doesn't even give one. What's the matter with it? I'll find out. I guarantee, said the boy. I'll tell you on my way back. He went on, and soon came to a town, where the watchman asked him the same question. What trade do you follow? What do you know? I know everything, said the boy. And what I don't know, I can find out. Tell me this then. There's a tree in the park that used to bear golden apples. But something's gone wrong. And now it won't even bear any leaves. Leave it to me, said the boy. I'll tell you on the way back. He went on a little further and came to a river where a ferryman was waiting to carry people back and forth. What's your trade? What do you know? I know everything, said the boy. What I don't know, I can find out. Well, here's a question for you. Why do I have to keep on crossing the river without anyone coming to relieve me? Don't worry, said the boy. I'll find the answer, sure enough. Not long after crossing the river, the boy found the entrance to hell. wasn't at home just then, but sitting in a big armchair, reading the paper was the devil's grandmother. What do you want? She said. She didn't look all that evil, so the boy told her what he'd come for. The king said that if I don't get the three golden hairs from the devil's head, he said, I won't be able to stay married to my wife. That won't be very easy, said the grandmother. If he finds out you're here, he'll probably eat you. But you're a good looking boy and I feel sorry for you, so I'll do my best. First, I'll change you into an ant. She did that. to make sure he could hear her. Hide in my skirts, she said, and I'll pluck the hairs for you. Oh, there's another thing, said the ant. I need to know the answer to some questions. Why does the fountain in the market square no longer even give water when it used to flow with wine? Why does the tree in the park that used to give golden apples no longer even produce leaves. And why does the ferryman have to keep on carrying people over the river? That's not so easy, she said. I can't promise anything. But keep quiet and listen very carefully to what he says. The ant nodded his tiny head and she tucked him under her skirts just in time too, because the devil came home at that very moment and started roaring. What is it? said his grandmother. Human. I can smell it. Who's been here? Me? He prowled around the room, lifting up chairs, looking in every corner. For evil's sake, she said. I've just tidied the place, can't you see? You'll make it all messy again. Sit down and have your supper and stop making a fuss about nothing. I can know, the devil muttered. I can smell it. But he sat at the table and gobbled up his supper. And then he lay down and put his head in his grandmother's lap. Pick the lice out of my hair, Granny, he said. She started to pick through his hair. Presently, he fell asleep and started snoring. As soon as she heard that, the old woman got hold of one of the golden hairs, tweaked it out. Oh! yelled the devil, waking up at once. What are you doing? I had a dream, 
said his granny, carefully, with hair down beside her. He couldn't see it. What dream? What was it about? A fountain, she said. It was in the market square. Years ago, it ran with wine, and everyone could help themselves. But now, it wouldn't even give water. Stupid people, muttered the devil, settling his head on her lap again. All the help to is dig out the toad under the stone in the fountain. If they kill that, the wine will flow again. The grandmother went back to picking out the lice. Once again, he began to snore. Searching through his tangled hairs, she found another golden one. Pulled it out. Oh! Why do you keep doing that? Sorry, sweetie, she said. I had another dream and didn't know what I was doing. Another dream? Eh? What was it about this time? There was a tree in the park, and it didn't even produce leaves anymore. Years ago, it used to give golden apples. Oh, they know nothing in that town. They should dig around the roots, and they'll find a mouse gnawing at them. Kill the mouse. They'll get the golden apples again. There, there, she said. If only I was as clever as you, I wouldn't wake you up. Go back to sleep now, thank you. The devil shifted about, put his head back on her lap. Presently, the snoring began again. She waited a little longer this time, then nipped out the third golden hair, putting it with the others. Oh! You're doing it again! What's the matter with you, you stupid woman? There, there, she said. It was that cheese I had for supper. It's making me dream again. You and your dreams. If you do that again, I'll thump you. What did you dream? I dreamed about a ferryman. He's been ferrying people back and forth for years and years. And no one will relieve him. <sighs> Do they know nothing, these people? All he has to do is hand his pole to the next person who wants to cross. And that person will have to take over. There, there, she said. You go back to sleep, my pretty one. I won't have any more dreams. Since she let him be for the rest of the night, the devil slept well. When he woke up, went out to work the next morning, his grandmother waited till she was sure he was gone and then took out the ant from her skirts and turned him back into the boy. Did you hear all that? She said. Yes, every word, he said. And did you manage to get the three hairs? Here you are she said, and handed them over. Being a polite young man, he thanked her very much, and went on his way, happy that he'd got everything he needed. When he came to the river, the ferryman said, Well, did you find out? Take me across first, replied the boy. And when they were at the other side, he said, All you have to do is put the pole into the hands of the next person who wants to cross, and you'll be free. He walked on, till he came to the city with the barren tree. The porter at the gate was expecting his answer too. Kill the mouse that's been chewing away at the roots, and it'll bear golden apples again, the boy told him. The mayor and corporation were so relieved that they rewarded him with two donkeys led in with gold. Leading his two donkeys homewards, he stopped at the other city where the fountain had dried up. Dig up the stone that's in the fountain and kill the toad hiding beneath it, he told them. They did so at once, and sure enough, the fountain began flowing with wine. They dragged to the boy's health and rewarded him with another two donkeys laden with gold. 
Leading his four donkeys, he travelled home. Everyone was very happy to see him again, especially his wife. When the king saw the donkeys and their cargo, he was delighted. My dear boy, he said, how wonderful to see you. And these hairs from the devil's head, splendid, put them on the sideboard. But where did you get all this gold? A ferryman took me across a river. Instead of sand, the bank on the other side was covered in gold. You can just pick as much as you want. I should take several sacks if I were you. The king was intensely greedy. So he set off at once. He hurried all day till he came to the river. And then beckoned the ferryman patiently. Steady now, said the ferryman as the king stepped on board. Don't rock the boats. Would you mind just holding this pole for me? Of course the king did so. And the ferryman jumped out at once. He laughed and sang and jumped for joy and ran away. And the king was compelled to stay in the boat forever, ferrying people back and forth as a punishment for his sins.